Evening Word of Life. Amen. So I want to know how many are truly excited to be in the house of God tonight. Does, you know what I mean? Any chance we get to get the Word, any chance we get to, to grow, you know, to press in, is you got to take advantage of every one of them. And Wednesday night's a good time to do that. So glad to see everyone here. Welcome everyone that's watching us online. Uh, let's all stand together and we're going to lift our hands and pray before we get ready to start the service. Amen. Father God, in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for meeting us here tonight, Lord God. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do for us tonight. Father, we know that you have a powerful word in store for us. Father, we, we just thank you for, for blessing each and everything that is said, each and everything that is done tonight. Let everything we do glorify you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. Let's turn over to Pastor Kim. Clap it up. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you this Wednesday. Um, nice weather today. We'll have more of that. Hopefully, there's more of that on the menu, right, for our, our daily our daily bread. Amen. We can have daily sun as well. Uh, well, welcome to Word of Life Worship Center. As you know, I'm Pastor Kim, and you're in our uh, midweek service, our Wednesday night service. And we also have a Sunday morning service at 10 a.m. And then every first and third Tuesday of the month, we have our men's roundtable with Pastor Troy. Amen. And clap it up. So you guys will be meeting again next Tuesday, and that's at 7 p.m. at the church. And then the third Saturday of every month, we have our women's Bible study. So we'll be um, doing that on the third Saturday. Amen. And that's our tea time with myself and the ladies. And um, I would say that the men and the women's Bible studies are interactive. Um, Pastor and I, we like to get feedback. And, and your, um, I wouldn't say interpretation isn't necessarily the right word, but just, you know, engagement and um, testimonies and all those kind of things that happen at, at Bible study. So it's good because, like we say for the men, iron sharpen iron. But women are, hey, we're iron too, right? So we need to sharpen each other. So, um I encourage you to come out to that, and um, I'm trying to think of what else we have. Well, we do have the um, all-church invite, I should say. Um, that's Memorial Day weekend at our San Diego church, and they're doing the uh, five-fold ministry, and that's um, Friday. It's uh, the 22nd of May, and they're going to be teaching on uh, the gift of prophecy, so that should be pretty, uh, pretty exciting. So you're all welcome to that. It's always an open invitation. Um, and I think with that, that's all the announcements that I have. So we'll just go ahead and proceed on uh, with service and get prepared for offering. Amen. Clap it up. Okay, so we'll start with our Bible declaration. You can hold up your Bible and repeat after me. This is my Bible. It's God's word to me. I believe every word. I claim every promise. I'm healed. I'm delivered, and I'm set free because of God's word. Amen. So we're looking at, um, for our scripture tonight, uh, Luke 638. And you guys should have it memorized by as many times as I go to it. <laughs> but Luke 638 is just a great overall scripture. Um, and we're going to look at it in the King James. And it says, give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And um, I'm sure many of you probably have experienced these um, instances where maybe you bless somebody and then somebody ends up blessing you even in the exact same thing. So, you know, I'm sure you've heard like, people in the drive through or whatever where um, the car in front ends up paying for the car in back. And then the person drives up, what? And then, you know, that's cool. But then the person that blessed you, they're gone. So it was just because they just wanted to do it. It wasn't that they needed to be seen before people or any of those things. They just wanted to do something special for that person today. And it doesn't matter the amount. Um, it could just be a smile, a hello, give somebody a hug. I mean, it could be anything. But whatever you do with your pure heart, 
that's going to come back to you. People with a pure heart are going to want to bless you as well. So with that, if you have your tithe or offering, you can hold your envelope and we'll pray and ask God to bless it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for tonight. I thank you that if we have anything in our envelopes, it's only because you have first given to us. I thank you, Lord God, that you are our provider. You are our life giver. You give us energy. You um, give us everything that we need, Lord God. And so I just ask a special blessing for all those that are here within the sound of my voice and those that may be um, watching online and, and that you would just see them, Lord, see their hearts. They are pressing through and uh, going through to get to, Lord. And so we just thank you for everything now. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, clapping. Everybody looking good. <laughs> All right, clap for Jesus. Amen. Praise God. All right. Let's all be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good to see everybody out here tonight. Amen. I thank God that He blessed us and kept us. And I know He kept you all day because otherwise I wouldn't see you right now. Amen. And we thank God for those that are tuning in at home. We just really appreciate the opportunity that God has given all of us to get the word. I tell you, um, this is becoming more and more valuable, us getting the word. And then, you know, if you could just think about it, like, I don't care what else is going on. I need to get the word. Amen. Any of you guys, come on. You can, you can come to that place in your life where you say, man... I don't have all the answers for everything, but I need the word. I'm going to get the word. And so we thank God for giving us this opportunity. And this is really, you know, this is his provision that's even made this available. So we thank God for that. Um, I want to uh, pray. I know I got, uh, you know, one. Well, I'm going to pray two prayers, but we need to get a breakthrough on this AC. I need you guys helping me with this prayers. They've been dragging their feet with this permit and and you could see just a little bit of warmth hit us and you could tell it's changing and so we need to get that i'm going to pray for a supernatural breakthrough i need that ac put in uh as soon as possible amen and so it's really just a matter of a permit you know just the red tape that they put you through but we're going to get a breakthrough on that thing in jesus name amen let's pray father in the name of jesus we just thank you, Lord, that you put us in this building and we know that everything is provided for, every need is met. And so we decree and declare, we establish by faith right now that this AC, the permits are getting pushed through, the permits for the AC in the bathroom with no delays, that we will not experience any discomfort as the season is beginning to change. We thank you and we thank you that we can ask it by faith and expect and believe and receive in Jesus name. Amen. All right. We call it done. All right. Also, I want to uh, pray for uh, Brother Sean. Some of you guys know Brother Sean and Sister Diantha. They are going on a mission trip to Samoa. And so they're leaving actually uh, tomorrow night. And so I want to pray for them. And I got a chance to speak with Brother Sean today. And he also asked for you know, for anyone who's willing and they'd be led by the spirit to pray for them 
during these next, you know, they're going to be gone for maybe nine, ten days or something like that. But just, you know, the Holy Spirit brings them up to you or something, pray for them because they're going to be going, they're not going on vacation. They're going into the mix. And so they, they're going right into it. And as soon as they land, they, they're out there witnessing, man. They're going to be doing some stuff. So we want to keep them covered. So let's pray now, but then you guys just continue that prayer on. Let's pray them through this mission trip. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we get the opportunity to pray as a church for Brother Sean and Sister Diantha. We know that they are anointed for such a time as this. We know that they're walking with power, that they're going to go to Samoa and they're going to carry the anointing of the living God. They're also carrying the word of life anointing. They uh, were faithful members here and under this teacher for many years and our strong disciples. And so we know they're carrying the power and their lives will be touched and transformed in Samoa. And I ask that you bless everyone that is with them on this trip. We expect to hear of miracles, signs, and wonders happening, Lord. Get them there safely with favor. Bring them back safely with favor. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Clap for the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it. Does that guy got anything else? Amen. Everybody blessed? All right, praise God. We pray for everybody. If you need prayer, we just release it on you. Be blessed. Let the power of God. I mean, y'all believe God is a healer. Amen. I just feel like God is a healer and he'll heal everything. And so we just release that healing anointing. Let it flow throughout this congregation. Let it flow throughout the airways. Anybody that hears us, I'm speaking right now that somebody would just tune in and hear two words and get healed. Amen. Come on, somebody, because that's kind of the kind of power that God is about to start turning up in this time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Well, uh, with that, we do have our, our class over there open. So go ahead and uh, let's get get that going. And then we're going to get into the word as to what we have tonight. We got some business to attend to. Amen. We always got business to attend to. It's Wednesday. What? Church is open. Yes, church is open. And, it, and we're not open to play games. We open for business. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Get them over there, man, and we're going to get right into this. Yep. Well, they're, they're there, so let's stand up. Let's shout hallelujah. Let's do it together. We need that help. We need hers. That's why I had to say that, because we need her help tonight. Let's say it on the count of three. Let's send it around the world. One, two, three. Hallelujah! <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Angels, y'all, you, you, you guys be bringing your angels on Wednesday. I surely do appreciate that. I just said they welcome on Sundays too. Just bring them angels on Sunday too, amen? Praise God. All right, well, we're going to get right into what God has for us tonight. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us, Lord, blessing us to be here tonight. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to sit at your feet and to receive fresh rhema from heaven. I bind the work of the devil right now in the name of Jesus, that there be no distractions, but that your word would go forth and accomplish that which you've sent it to. We thank you, Lord, and we surrender to the power of the Holy Ghost now. In Jesus' name, amen. Church said amen. Praise God. All right. All right, let your neighbor say, get your Bible out. Amen. I want to preach this message tonight. I mean, it's Faith Academy, so we're always preaching on faith. And, and really, you know, we have faith in God, and then we have to have faith in his word. Amen. So some people could say, you know, I have faith in God. And we want to applaud them for that. We want to say praise the Lord for that. But then we want to encourage them to develop faith in his word. Amen. And so you can't develop faith in his word until you learn. And so you start to know what his word says. And so I'm going to preach this message tonight entitled all word, all word. And so what this means is we want to regulate our lives in such a way to where it's just all word. 
And so let every response that you have to what may be going on in your life or whatever, you want it to be all word, amen? Because there's a lot of opinions, there's a lot of uh, ideas of man, and there's a lot of stuff that people are saying, but we don't need to focus on everything else. We need to focus on the word. We need to focus on what is God saying? What does his word say about this or that? What is his word saying to me? So let's go over here to Romans, Romans 10, 8. Romans 10, 8. Praise God. It says, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. Stop right there. And so we know that it goes on uh, in, in uh, verse 9 about, you know, that's how you get saved. You know, you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. But I want us to put an emphasis on this so that we have our expectations set as believers. But what saith it? The word is where? In your mouth. Nigh thee. It's in your mouth too. Yeah. So the word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart. Amen. And so, but it says, that is the word of faith. Look at your name and say the word of faith. The word of faith which we preach. Amen. The word of faith which we preach. And so we are preaching faith. Let me just establish that right now. Because there's a lot of times faith is not there. You know, people's faith is dwindled or uh, doubt is set in or different things. But we are preaching faith. You know what we're never going to do in this church? We're never going to preach doom and gloom. Oh, come on, let me just help you right now. We're never going to preach doom and gloom because how I many know oh, there's no doom and gloom in the kingdom? When I become a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, the doom and the gloom is over. Oh, man, come on. Uh, the doom and the gloom is over. Yeah, I may have challenges, but how I many know oh, challenges are just that? That's all they are is challenges. Challenges don't mean you lose. Come on, man. Challenges don't mean you lose. And so we don't need to be anticipating what crazy thing man is going to do. Because we are preaching the word of faith. The word of faith, that's what we preach. Amen. And so what we believe is that every situation can and will get better. Oh, come on, man. They're just things that you got to do when you become a Christian. You've got to decide what mindset that you're going to lock into. Are you going to lock into the mindset of the world? And you know, that's one of the, the main things that have to uh, be recognized when you become a Christian. You got to be renewed in your mind. Amen. You guys know that there, there's uh, be renewed. Uh, what is that? Let me just grab this real quick. Ephesians be renewed in the spirit of your mind. But well, I'm telling, I think it's Ephesians chapter four, something like that. Let me just grab it. But this is so important. Uh, let me see. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, Twenty. Be renewed. If so, be. Okay. Yeah. Ephesians four twenty three. Ephesians four twenty three. And so he says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, man. This is important. Think about this. I become a Christian. I got to be renewed in my mind because if not, I'm going to be thinking the way I used to think. But now I'm just a Christian. So I'm just, you know, going to heaven. Well, how many know that would be OK for you if you were going to heaven tonight? But you ain't going tonight. Or most people are not saying, Pastor, I want to go tonight. Most of the time we want to continue to live. But so how do I live as a Christian? Well, I've got to be renewed in the spirit of my mind because there's a mindset, there's a way of thinking that we've been uh, really indoctrinated with. We've been uh, manipulated even growing up. And it doesn't mean that you were raised in a bad family. It's just the way the society is. This society is set up to instill fear in you and have you doubt God and not expect anything big? Come on. Amen. And now we are looking at the world to let us know how we can live. Amen? Amen. 
but that's not the way of the kingdom. And so we believe that every situation can and will get better. Y'all believe that? Come on, let's confess that. Say every situation can and will get better. So what happens when they come out with this doom and gloom and they start talking about all oh, the sky is falling? What you going to say? Some of y'all can say it's falling on you, but it ain't falling on me. So let me get away from you. <laughs> but we just have to have all of our responses be based on the word. God hasn't said that he wants me awaiting punishment unless I'm in the category of the sinner. Now the sinner should be waiting to get a whooping or waiting for things to go bad, but that's not the way of the believer, amen? amen. And so, but now we've got to have our minds renewed so every situation can and will get better. What if you thought that way when you just, I mean, you first went into a situation. It was difficult, but you had it in the back of your mind. Everything, everything can get better. I, I believe this is going to turn out. I believe God's going to do something with this. Now, wouldn't that give you some type of energy or some type of optimism? Or, but what if you went in there and you said, oh, this is terrible. I already know this is going to be bad. This is really going to be horrific. How do you have the ability to continue? Amen. Amen. When you have such a cloud. But if you can in your mind, because what did you do? I gave y'all that scripture, Ephesians 4, 23. Y'all didn't know that was a bonus? That was a... <laughs> See, when the bonuses, the free ones, the free ones are worth a lot. I just want you to know, the free ones are worth a lot. So if I give a free one, you need to write it down or make a mental note because it didn't come from me. What does that mean? It didn't come from no notes. Come on, I gave you a free one. It didn't come from no study notes. It came straight from the Holy Ghost. So Ephesians 4, 23, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that's the word spirit in there is talking about the core, the depth. So that's like really renewed. How many of y'all used to think some crazy thoughts? You need, and you know them thoughts wasn't going to work in the kingdom. So you need to get renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. Praise God. And so now, we, once again, I'm going to say it for the third time. I have to be uh, obeying God and do, fulfilling my assignment. We preach the word of faith. We believe that every situation can and will get better. And I'm going to tell you why I believe that because it's in this book. Amen. And you got to be careful who you listen to and all these people. You know, now we get these people want to come out and everybody's a prophet now and everybody's got a thing and, you know, okay. Every time something happens, the eclipse happens. Oh, that's a sign and something else is going to happen down here. And, you know, I told you guys on Sunday, there was one man that said uh, it was over in 2024. Well, we in April. I'm, I'm just saying we in April of 2024 and I'm still preaching. Amen. But but this man was talking about this is a Don Dada in, in 2024. But the Bible says no man knows the hour. So we're not to be putting our attention on these things and don't allow this fear to come in and start to manipulate the way you think and the way you uh, start to go forward in life and your outlook and well pfft, ain't no need in planning on anything great we're gonna be out of here anyway I mean I might as well just that's the wrong way to live you ought to expect that the best days of your life are still ahead of you Oh, y'all, did I say that in the middle of all this? The best days of your life are still ahead of you. I believe the best days for Word of Life is still ahead of us. We're, we're just barely getting started, amen? That's the way I like to live in the earth, amen? And there's no, and then if you can be convinced, there's no losing. So if the enemy wants to instill fear, he, he typically will instill fear in regards to some type of thing that's going to lead to death, you know, a demise or a fall. Well, what happens if you die? Is that a loss? Did you lose? I mean, come on. When you, now, now once again, it's going to take a renewing of the mind. So wait a minute. If I die, I'm going to heaven. Let me just think about heaven. Hmm. They got streets of gold. Man, they got just Rivers flowing. There's just so much stuff. 
oh yeah, and then God said he got some mansions and stuff like that for me. And uh, so is, he is heaven a bad option? And now what if you told the devil who's trying to make you afraid, because that's what he did, right? That's what he did with COVID. That's what he does with everything, the government, everything. Well, you know, the, the greatest fear is death. But as a Christian, you say, I don't die anymore. Amen. So I will just be promoted. Praise God. And so if you want to threaten me with death, come on, man, can you do it tonight? Amen. Now, if, if, see, if he hears you responding like that, because first of all, he can't kill you. You're going to live here until God says he's taking you home. So don't even worry about, you know, somebody telling you when you got to go. But what I'm saying is a mindset. If I renew that mind like that, I won't be afraid of nothing because everything from that decision I made to follow Christ, it's all good. No, it's all it's all going to be better. So just keep that in your mindset. And so be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And now go to Romans, Romans 8, 28. We believe that everything I'm talking about everything. I want you to take this. Listen, I want your life to be structured on the word, all word. Every situation, I don't care what it is, no matter what I get into, I believe it's going to turn out well. I believe God's going to work it out. Even if it don't look good today, I believe God's going to do something and it's going to work out because that's what his word tells me. And so when you say all word, like the title of this message, all word, well, then you have to be one that says, my belief system is established by the word. And people say, well, why do you why do you think like that? It's all word. Well, how come you're not afraid of the economy and all this type of stuff? All word. Amen. How come you're not af afraid of food shortages? All word. I, I just. Amen. I'm basing everything I believe on the book. God. I'm not basing it on man's projections and all that. I'm just basing it on the book. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things. What's all things mean? Is anything excluded from that? All things work together for what? Good? So I can expect good then, right? If any situation I'm in, even if it seems bad, would I be safe to say I can expect good? Is that, is that unreasonable? Now, I'm a Christian. Though. I'm going to make sure we're clear on this because this ain't just for everybody. Not everybody can just expect things to work out but it's the one that's a Christian the one that's given their lives over to Jesus and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God so what you got to do you got to love God to them who are called according to whose purpose see now we got this problem in our world today with people running off doing stuff and then tagging along tagging God along come on God come on God we going to Texas and God is like, oh, we are? No, no, we're moving. Come on, God, it's time for us to move, so I need you to bless me over here. God, that's not how he works. God is in the front. Oh, can I get an amen right there? God is not in the back. So God is in the front talking about, I I'm going to lead you, and then that's where the blessing is going to flow. And so I have to love God, and I have to be called according to his purpose and not mine. You guys are all right with that. If I, if I know that, then I can rest comfortably and know that, oh, everything's going to work out. Well, what's going to happen next week? Oh, something good. Because I'm going to be obeying God next week, too. So I'm, something's good. Well, what about this? It's all going to work out. And, you know, sometimes there are delays and things happen, and you don't necessarily know. Like, you don't know why, you know. And, but later on, you find out. You know what I'm saying? It's like uh, just delays. We had, we had we pushed a lot of stuff with this building. We was hammering them. But then now we got these little delays with that AC permit. So sometimes they're like, man, we don't. The devil's attacking. He's trying to mess with our AC. We don't know everything. But then there's little details. God gives you a chance to pay attention to. I was talking to uh, I think it was Pastor Chris. Me and him was together here recently. But. I was saying, you know, you, you could just see God in everything and you just be patient because, you know. This the people who had this building before us, there was this crazy machine shop, so they had 
big extra power boxes. They were just draining so much energy. So they were on a high tier in terms of their electric uh, bill. And so we got put in that same tier because of them. And that's what they typically do. The new tenant stays in the old tier, which basically means you pay double per kilowatt for your electricity. Y'all follow me? And so now we, we know how that works because I had to deal with it at our old building. But so the thing is, is we don't generate had not even close to what they were doing. But now God has blessed us. We've been in here. We, this, tonight's really the first night. It's kind of warm in here. We, we've been all right. In, in fact, it's been a little chilly in uh, most of the Sundays. But think about this. We now I filled out the paper where I got all the stuff lined up, which it took time to do to where we get dropped to tier one. So we get dropped to tier one before we get our AC. Come on, somebody. I'm just saying. See, then now, 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 if you understand God works all things together. So what does that mean, Pastor? That means if I, when we get the AC and I turn it on, we paying much less for that AC running than we would have been had it been put in already. Y'all in here with me. And so now if I step back and I say, OK, God, I see what you're doing. Then what, what, where's my complaining going to be? See, because I'm going to be a lot happier when those electric bills come in and they're going to be way less because we got dropped a tier. Well, but you don't always know that. You just think what's in front of you, this is a delay, man, and this is. But you, if you go in knowing, as far as I'm concerned, anything dealing with me, God works all things together for my good. That'll give you some patience. Amen. And that'll let you just trust God's process. Amen. Let's read this same verse in the NLT. So I, don't, I say as Christians, we shouldn't have nothing to complain about. Amen. I just believe that. And we know that God causes, <clears throat> causes everything to work together for good, for the good of those who love God and are called according to his, uh, his purpose for them. And so the word causes. So he causes everything. So God causes everything to work together for your good, meaning God is responsible for working things out for you. You guys in here with me? Amen. God is responsible. Have you guys ever had God fix something that you could not fix? Amen. And he fixed it in a way where you didn't even think of that. And he fixed it. And he caused the thing to work out to benefit who? You. Because you love him. Oh, come on, somebody. And you're called according to his purpose. See, and that's why I preach these things that I preach like I preach Sunday. Man, if you're going to follow Jesus, you got to sacrifice. you got to get out the way. Well, see, it starts out difficult, then it gets better. Because now you're on God's flow. And you're out of, out of your own. And now he'll just change stuff. He'll work stuff out. And I've seen this. I've seen this. Happen. I've seen this manifest in my own personal life where God has worked it out Amen. time and time and time again. Here goes a situation, a bill, a this, a that. Worked it out. Worked it out. Just kept, you know what I'm saying, to where now I have no other way to think. Amen. 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 I mean, I have, he's in, done it for my family and he's done it for the church. So, He's already proven it to me. But if I go into every situation knowing that he works all things together for my good, Amen. then now I have a better chance to stay out of his way. Amen. Amen. Y'all in here with me? I'm, I'm telling you, I've seen him uh, and I've said this before, but I got to keep saying it because we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. I've seen him overturn things. Seventy some thousand dollars they want us to pay in our last building and said it was some back charge. Well, I know God works all things together for our good. That ain't our good. And so I ain't, ain't no need me entertaining that. No, we're not paying that. And then what did he do? Flipped it. Oh, yeah. My bad. You don't know it. I know we don't. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? 
Years ago, $12,000, the same thing. No, nope. what do you do? Because he works all things together, come on y'all, for our good. You see what I'm saying? My, our house, oh well, lost my job, can't get the house. Oh no, he works all things, come on y'all, together for our good. So we still got the house, amen? Even the, the next house we bought, he works all things. Come on, y'all getting the picture? You understand what I'm saying? You, you see why I don't change. Amen. When you got evidence, you can't change. Amen. Amen. And the house we in now, he knocked off 300 some thousand of uh, debt off of that house. He works all things. Come on, somebody. And get this, he knocked it off, but then... We got to keep the equity. Oh, y'all. Wait, wait, wait. How you going to get some equity? You, you didn't have no equity in that house. Yeah, I did. Because when they, when, when they knocked the principal down off of that mug, that equity became mine. Wait, but you didn't pay that money. I sure didn't. But God works all things together. Huh? Y'all. So you got like a 600 some thousand dollar house and they knock it down to 300 something. So you got instant equity. Because the house is still worth all this. But that ain't your money. Yeah. <laughs> Guess what? If, I if we would have sold our house, we would have got it. But that's just stuff that God does. And so you don't have to go into any situation. That's why I say never make panic decisions. Never make decisions that are fear-based. Never say, oh, I got to do this. No, you don't. What you got to do is serve God. Amen. What you got to do is obey God. You got to position yourself to where you know you're with him. That's what you got to do. And then now he'll work all things together. He will cause those things. See, he will call. That's what he did with our house. He caused those things to work out. He caused that, that thing to randomly come to us in the mail and say, sign this and you get this new program. He caused that. I didn't cause that. Amen. Amen. But if you start panicking, now you start swimming with your own strength. Amen. Now you get in them waters and guess what? You swimming on your own because you, now you remember all the stuff you know about swimming. <laughs> but I'm tell you one thing. You don't know enough for that water. You'd be better off depending on God. And so God causes. He, he is responsible for working things out for you. Now, in the midst of every situation, you must stay grounded. I have to preach this. I have to preach. It's, it's kind of like God uses me to preach some sense into the body of Christ. Because if you're not careful, you get to listen to all these people. You, you can't even, now you can't even listen to... You better be very careful just because they're Christian. That don't mean you need to listen to them. Well, there's some folks out there in the name of Jesus. They selling fear and they, they planting fear seeds in the name of Jesus. So don't do it. You got to be very careful. And so you have to. In the midst of every situation, you must stay grounded. You must stay grounded. You must ask yourself. What does the word say? That's it. I'm faced with a trial. I'm faced with a, a money shortage. I'm faced with a sickness. I'm faced with chaos. Or I'm faced with what, what does the word say? That's what you got to ask yourself. And if you don't know, then you pray and you ask the Holy Ghost to show you. Amen. But what you don't do is start making decisions and doing stuff and all this stuff and all these people talking about, well, you better get, you better start stacking your dry goods. You better start buying canned goods and you better, what are we going to do with all that? If, do you know if stuff goes wrong, that little supply you got ain't going to last? Anybody up in here with me? I said, no, pastor, I'm ready, man. I got, listen, I got a whole garage full. I'm telling you, that garage ain't going to last you more than a month. Because somebody's going to find out you got it. And if it went, and if it went that bad, you're going to get jacked. Guaranteed. Somebody coming for your stuff. See, that's self-preservation. We can't preserve ourselves. The Lord is our keeper. And so we have to say, uh, 
I'm not going out buying all this uh, canned goods and stocking up on top ramen and all that. I'm not doing that. I'm just going to believe God. Well, what if the store is closed and you can't buy nothing? Well, then guess, I guess God's going to have to give me some manna. He'll probably just give me manna. He might give me quails. I don't know what he's going to give me, but he's going to give me something. See, the world wants us to think that this stuff this is unreasonable. It's unreasonable for you to be believing like that. You know, they say, well, what if they shut down the money system? Well, Isaiah 55, he says, come and buy with no money. So I can just walk up in there and the Lord has need of that and that and this too. <laughs> right now. But but I'm saying things like this because these are the times we're in. And faith needs to be preached, but not just faith like hyper hype you up. I ain't trying to hype you up. I just want you to believe in the book. I just want you to say either he's your keeper or not. If you decide that he's your keeper, then let, let's roll with it. Amen. Amen. Now, faith doesn't always mean like, OK, well, I'm, I got faith, so I got to get this million dollar house. If God leads you to that and he wants to bless you with that, that's OK. You can receive it, but don't get this whole faith thing twisted. Faith is that unwavering trust in God. That's real faith. Real faith is, man, I, it sounds like bombs are going off outside, but I trust them. Come on, somebody. That's real faith. Amen? Amen. All right? And so, um, so in the midst of anything you're dealing with, I want you to ask yourself, what does the word say? And so now we go to the word to get confirmation of God's promises. That's why we go to the word. So we go to the word to get confirmation. We got to, oh man, I think I heard about that. I think, see, it's one thing when you heard of it, but it's another thing when you read it for yourself. You read it for yourself and you go, oh, that's what it says. And so we go to the word to get confirmation of God's promises. Now, here's what we don't do. We don't go to the word to gain an understanding of man's ways. And that's what they're trying to do now. A lot of these people are trying to get into this uh, eschatology and starting to try to explain end times and trying to do these type of things. But at the end of the day, what you need to do is you need to be occupying until he comes. You need to be out there sharing the good news of Jesus. You need to be living your best Christian life that you can. You should be uh, getting rid of the little hang ups and you need to be trying to make sure, Lord, I'm just doing I want to just be doing 100. I want to go 100 for you. Not focusing on what end times things looks like it's lining up and looks like at the end of the day, if it all lines up, all that's going to matter is were you ready? Yeah. Come on. And you're not going to be ready because you've been anticipating when this is going to happen and when that's going to happen. You're going to be ready because you're about your father's business. You have prioritized the kingdom. You have now stepped into a place of your life where you're living sacrificially for Jesus. Amen. You stepped into your life where you say, this ain't even my life. I'm sold out for Christ. Amen. Now, somebody that's living like that, they ain't scared of the rapture or nothing. Because when it comes, they're going to be working. And they're not going to be worried about it. And so we go to the word of God to get confirmation of God's promises. I'm going to touch on that in a minute, but not to gain an understanding of man's way. So don't be trying to get in this book and figure out what man is doing. Did y'all hear me? Amen. Don't get in here and start trying to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out what these, what they're doing. It seems like it's come on, man. You don't need to do that. You don't need to get in here and do that. And then here's another thing. Uh, don't worry about the wicked. Here's another thing that Christians do. Ooh, I just, ooh, these people so, I just want God to judge them because they're, they're just, their wickedness must be found out. You don't need to worry about that. Amen. Well, I'm just, you know, all these policies and all this White House and all this stuff, boy, these people need to be, no, you need to look at what you need to be. What do you need to be doing? You need to be ready when your time comes. So don't worry about the wicked. God will deal with them. Let me say this. And God, even in my studies, kind of interjected something here for me to share so that you would rest comfortably to know the wicked will be dealt with. Yes. You do not need to have your mind 
on what kind of punishment the wicked is going to get. You need to have your mind on the kingdom. Because every time you're thinking about somebody else doing wrong, they need to get judged. And there could have been 10 people that God wanted you to witness to. There could have been a miracle healing. God might have used your hands to heal somebody. Amen. But you worried about these people need to be found out. They need to be. They're not fooling God. Let's go to Job. I'm going to give you this. This is just a somewhat of a bonus scripture, but just to help you get your mind off the wicked. Don't worry about them. You just make sure you're not wicked. All oh, y'all in here with me. So Job 34 and verse 21. Let's look at that real quick. And I'm, I'm going to read through 27 in the NLT. Uh, For God watches how people live. Y'all see this? Amen. Who's watching how people live? Okay. For God watches how people live. He sees everything they do. No darkness is thick enough to hide the wicked from his eyes. Y'all see this? Amen. We don't set the time when we will come before God in judgment. He brings the mighty to ruin without asking anyone. He's not going to ask your permission. He's not going to ask you, oh, well, you think I should take him down now? He ain't even considering what you... He, you just better make sure you're not wicked. He brings the mighty to ruin without asking anyone. And he sets up others in their place. That's what God will do. God will take somebody down and put somebody else up. But that's on him, not on us. Next verse. He knows what they do. And in the night, he overturns and destroys them. He strikes them down because... They are wicked. And he's, he does this openly for all to see. For they turned away from following him. They have no respect for any of his ways. See? We can stop right there. So that's what he's going to do. Now, God's got the wicked. We just got to make sure we're focusing on what we're supposed to be focused on. Amen? Amen. And, and so it's, it, it's um, I don't know, maybe more than twofold. There's several warnings coming out from me to you in this message. One, don't doubt God. Any situation you step into, trust him. Believe that it's going to get better. He can turn it around. He's going to do something great. But then also, don't get caught up worrying about what the wicked are doing. That's a warning. Let them go ahead and do what they're going to do because God sees them and God's going to deal with them. Amen? Amen. But you don't want anything to distract you. So now what you want to do is you want to get back to where I said we. Because um, I told you I had to share that because that was like an interjection that God gave me to add into the sermon. And so now I'm back to we go to the word of God to get confirmation of his promises. Amen. So I took that little diversion to help you understand. We don't worry about the wicked. I gave you the scripture. God's got that. He sees everything they're doing. But what are we doing? Oh, we go to the word to get confirmation of all of God's promises. Now I'll go to 2 Corinthians 1.20 in the King James. And so for all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Now let's look at the same verse in the Amplified Classic and we'll get some more understanding here. For as many as are the promises of God, they all find their yes answer in Christ. See that? Amen. For this reason, we also utter amen, so be it, to God through him in his person and by his agency to the glory of God. So what does this mean? So this means that Jesus is our bridge, ushering us into the promises of God. And so now if you study the Bible, especially the Old Testament, you'll see promises of God that were promised to a specific people. That wasn't you. But now we may read it and we say, well, no, I think that's me. Only in Christ. Can I get an amen right there? And so when he said that he's going to bless and prosper and do all those things, he was talking to the children of Israel. But because of 
our connection through Christ, now what are we? Grafted in. And so, and this is what this scripture is saying is, now in Christ, all those promises that he made to them applies to you. Amen. Oh, come on, man. Because now we are in Christ. So Jesus is our bridge ushering us into the promises of God. See, and that's how I can claim that I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field. Come on, blessed going in, blessed going out. I can claim all of that. Amen. I can claim that God's put the blessing upon me in my storehouses and in everything that I put my hands on to Deuteronomy 28, 8. I can claim that. Why? Because I'm in Jesus. Now go to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter two. So remember, we go to the word to get confirmation of the promises of God. We want to know. First of all, I got to know how do I have access to this? So now Ephesians chapter two, we look at verse 11 through 19 in the King James. He says, wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh. So stop right there. So that's where we were. We were not born Jews. So we can understand how somebody can say, man, these promises are not for you because you were not born a Jew. But guess what? I got born again. And when I got born again, now Jesus has blessed me to be grafted in to the royal family of God. And so now I get to claim and lay hold of these blessings and all these promises. Wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles just means non-Jew in the flesh, which are who are called uncircumcised, uh, are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision. So Jews would call Gentiles uncircumcised. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that uh, covenant with Abraham circumcised on the eighth day and all that type of stuff. And so a person that was not born a Jew would not qualify. And so they were considered by many heathens because they're outside of God's promises. Next verse. That at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Stop right there. You see that? So that's what you used to be when you wasn't saved. I used to be, it doesn't matter what God promised to his people. I, I, didn't, I couldn't get none of that. Amen? Because my only way into that was through Christ. And so now I was in the world without hope. And so that's like, there's a good life going on over here, but you can look at it, but you can't have none of it. But now in Christ, that's where things change. And so next verse. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Stop right there. Man, I that's why I'm telling you, I love this. I love being a Christian, man, because Jesus paid the price not only for me to get to heaven. That's why you guys got to listen to what I'm teaching you, because what I'm talking about right now is not talking about heaven. But yet a lot of the Christian world, that's where they stop. They just think eh, I get saved. I give my life to Jesus and I go to heaven. No, no, no. You get saved. Now you get to step into the blessing. Oh, come on, somebody. You get saved. Now you get to step into the blessing. But now you got to be renewed right in the spirit of your mind, because if not, you're not going to understand that. And that's how you have people today. They they. They're scared to say stuff like you say, how you doing? They scared to say I'm blessed. Amen. They'll say God bless you, but they won't say I'm blessed. I, I say that all the time. How you doing? Blessed. I'm, all, I'm blessed. I know I'm I know I'm blessed Amen. because I know. Listen, but now in Christ Jesus, you who are sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. So the blood of Jesus ushers me into the blessing of God. So I surely ain't anticipating no doom and gloom because I'm blessed and I'm ushered right in. Next verse. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Stop right there. So what this means is he destroyed the division between Gentile and Jew. 
So there's no more division. Jesus, through his blood, abolished it. Amen. Now, what's so powerful about this is now a Christian who has received the power of the blood has more blessing and more uh, power coming into their lives than a Jew who has rejected the Messiah. Now the blessings that were originally designed for them, they don't get it. All y'all in here with me. Because he made it clear the only way to do this is through Christ. Because when you study that Old Testament, it's always about you obey, you get blessed. You disobey, you get punished. Well, nobody can obey without Jesus. Amen. Amen. And so, you know, you, you'll see there's a level of prosperity that um, Jewish people get to experience, historically speaking. But the reason for that is their adherence to biblical principles. And so now I can just touch on that briefly. They hadn't yet accepted the Messiah, but Jewish people, the richest people in the world, the Jewish are right in that 1%. And the reason they got so much money is because of their adherence to biblical principles. Everything God said do with the money, that's what they do. Even though they didn't accept Jesus as the Messiah, they still. So now people can have principles working and that principle will be working for them in the earth. They just have eternity in hell. But see, there's, and just like the other way is people could be saved, but not applying no biblical principles. And so, yeah, you saved, but you broke. Oh, I can't get amen right amen. there. <laughs> yeah, you saved, but you broke. Well, no, I shouldn't be broke no more. No, you still broke because you ain't tithing. I mean, it's a biblical principle. It is what it is. Yeah, you're going to heaven. Praise God. But see, and then, so now that's why you understand, like, Jewish people, I'm talking about when it comes to money, they got, woo, I'm talking about they serious. They got it down to a T. They got how much they're supposed to give God, how much they're supposed to save. How much, I mean, they teach their kids when they're little in jars. And they got like about five different jars. And this is how you place all your money supposed to be in these different jars. They know it and they live by it. They, all, they seem to always have a lot of money. But that's just because they're applying biblical principles. Now, how much more for you, though? How much more for you as a Christian who now has been given access, brought nigh by the blood. Come on, but don't shortchange yourself. Don't shortchange yourself and say the blood gets me to heaven. No, the blood gets me into the blessing. And so glory to God, I'm going to heaven, but I'm going to be blessed down here. Ooh, I'm telling you, stuff is working out for me. Huh? You could be one that expects every situation in your life to turn out well for you. Oh, that's just unrealistic. Is it? No. It is very realistic. Amen. But we've been tricked. We've been tricked into thinking everybody has a bad day. <laughs> Things can't go right for you all the time. You have to have some. Hmm? Right that ain't what the book says. That's what we say. But I'm, I'm trying to teach you this because it's, it's that renewing of your mind, but it's also what you're putting your focus on, what you're looking at. Your expectations are developed by what you surround yourself with. Amen. We are in this world, but not of it. So we need to learn to live according to a different set of standards. Um, yes, for he is our peace. Let me see. OK, I'm going to keep reading. He broke down the middle wall between us. Verse 15, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace. So that one new man, Jew, Gentile, don't matter. The blood of Jesus is all that matters. Get under that blood. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity Thereby, in, in the TF. And 
came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access. Look at your neighbor and say, access is granted. What if, what if you get that, man? You, you, you go up to something and it's like some serious security, man. It's security like, you know, they don't be letting people. Have any of y'all ever been in something where you had to go past some, they had to buzz some doors to get you in there? You know what I mean? You feel kind of, you know what I mean? Don't you feel kind of like, yeah, man. Okay, yeah, I'm going. You feel kind of, you know, special. Well, access is granted going up in there. What if they buzz the, the thing and you just sitting there going, I don't know. <laughs> what should I are you sure I should go in there? No, access is granted. That's the way it is with God. Now, because of Jesus, we have access. Amen. We could flow right in there and not even act like we're strangers or something. It's for through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners. See that? You are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of God and of the household of God. And uh, is that it? I think that's it. OK. And so now we're fellow citizens grafted in to the royal family of God. So now we're not strangers or foreigners to the covenant promises of God. So what does that mean? If he promised it, it's for me. Y'all, come on, you gotta, you gotta get that now. You gotta say, oh no, if he promised it, it's for me. Well, I need to find out what he promised. And, and that's what you wanna do, that you wanna find out. What did you promise? What did you promise? And we'll, you know, it's all in, it's all in the book and he'll direct you through that. But he says uh, that, you will be blessed in everything that you do. He's commanded the blessing to be upon you. He's, he's done all these type of things, but you can expect things to work for you. You can expect your health to be good. You can expect all these things because, matter of fact, I got to give you this extra scripture. Go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28. We're just going to start at verse one. I'll probably read through maybe verse eight. But you got to see this because this is now your heritage. This is what you get. This is what you ought to expect out of life. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I commanded this day that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Amen. You ought to expect to have special treatment set on high. Amen. Next verse. Uh, and then he says, and all these blessings. Y'all see this? Yes. So these are multiple all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God so what does it mean now if I obey God I get blessed is that what that's saying yes. if I obey God then I can expect to be blessed man I can expect to be overtaken by the blessing verse 3 blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field what's that mean to you no matter where I go, I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. Next verse. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. This is talking about your kids are blessed, your possessions are blessed. I mean, what if this was your reality? Well, you say everything about me, man, is blessed. Now, the devil wants to keep you ignorant of this. He wants to keep you depending on a failing system. He wants to keep you uh, confessing fear-based confessions instead of faith-based confessions. Amen. But we got to change that. So we go to the word of God to get confirmation of the promises. I'm just reading stuff right here to you. This is one little chapter reading just all this stuff right here. Confirmation. Next verse. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. So that means your store is where you're storing it, but your basket is what you use to gather. Come on, somebody. Y'all want some revelation on this? Yeah. And so what this means is that what I'm doing to gather so my work is blessed and so is my bank account. Oh, come on. Y'all didn't even catch that. So my work is blessed 
So if I'm working there, I'm blessed. Come on, somebody. Um, they're not cutting. <laughs> Listen, they're not about to mess up on my check. Oh, they're not messing up on my check. Oh, no, see, because everybody, nobody got paid. No, I'm getting paid. No, they're going to have to get some money from somebody else to pay me. Now, but you got to line your confessions up with the truth because you can't be speaking when everybody speaks. Oh, it looks like it's a shortage. It looks like they got some pay cuts. And then here you are talking at the water cooler like, I don't know what we're going to do, man. We're making a lot less money now. Uh-uh, you're blessed. That don't apply to you. I haven't seen God do it, man. And a unannounced, unknown about bonus. Come on, just comes in. I've been seeing this stuff work in my life, but I had to learn. I got to line my confessions up with the promises and not with what they talking about because they're not blessed. And so you don't let somebody who is not blessed change your confession. And they talking about, well, I'm thinking, you know, it seemed like the money's going down. Well, their money is going down. Amen. But that don't mean yours is. Now they're going to get they're going to get you co-signing with them. But you're supposed to be folks on the blessings. What's the book say? All word. It's got to be all word. Amen. Amen? I'm just taking a little time on this, man. I got to make sure y'all get this. Verse six. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in. Y'all getting this? Mm -hmm. And blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Hmm. It seemed like you all wait, you're just blessed. Now, what about this? Oh, you know, we, we all got haters. We all got, you know, I told you, don't worry about the wicked. Because what's this say? The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Meaning he going to. He going to take them out and he'll let you look at it. Come on. Psalm 23, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And so you don't need to worry about them. Oh, these guys are hating on me. These people are trying to. God got them. Let me focus on what God's doing for me. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way. I told you, that's why I don't worry about the devil. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before these seven different ways. That means you're going to see them running out like some mice. Come on. Scattering. Trying to get away. Now, you got to have that expectation, though. Verse 8. We'll stop at verse 8 on this one. The Lord shall command. What's command? What's that mean to you guys? Man, I, I got to... I'm going to have to get... I'm gonna, we need some more time for preaching, man, because I'll be running out of... I'm getting... Man, it's just so much word, man. It's just so much word. But this, this is not like complicated. This is like just straight up. That's what it says. And so we got to get to the place in our lives where we believe what it says. That's it. We don't need any other explanation. Just tell me what it says. And this is what he's saying. The Lord shall command the blessing. Now, this is one blessing, not Multiple, because the blessing is that empowerment to succeed. That is what you inherit because now you are in Christ. And so now you inherit that blessing that God put on Abraham. And so now it is commanded, meaning you have to be blessed. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the Lord shall command the blessing to be upon thee in thy storehouses. Look at your name and say that's bank accounts with an S. You need to have more than one bank account, man. You got to have multiple. The Lord shall command a blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that you set your hands unto. Anything you put your hands unto is blessed. You ought to be one that says, everything I do works, man. I'm just saying, I'm a problem solver up in here. If I'm doing it, it's going to work out because I put my hand on it and this is just blessing all over. You know, you ought to be like, man, seem like people just always want to shake my hands. Because they want to get that blessing. They want to say, man, what does that feel like? That's the blessing, man. And you'll see, if you come into this place where you're acknowledging it, I'll show you how to do it before we close, but you got to be intentional with this stuff. You can't be haphazard. You can't just live life and then come get a little recharge on Wednesday and go live like, no, you must be renewed in the spirit of your mind. This is about a takeover. This is about a new way of living for you. 
This has got to bleed into every area of your life. He shall bless thee in the land which he gives you. Uh, and so you can just expect the blessings all over the place. So we get this, we inherit this through Abraham. So Galatians 3.9, I'm going to go through this fast before we close. Galatians 3.9. So we get it through Jesus, but what I got to make sure we're clear on is the blessing was already flowing before Jesus. Y'all got that? So God didn't create a new blessing for saved people. Oh, come on. He didn't create a new blessing for saved people. No, he, because of Jesus, gave us who used to be Gentiles now access to this original blessing that came out of Genesis chapter 12. This is saying it ain't no new blessing. Because how I many know he don't he don't need to do a new one if the, the other one's just working just fine. And so now we got access to this. So now, because we have faith in Jesus, so then they which be of faith are what? Blessed, Blessed with what? With who? Abraham. Oh, see, when I first got saved, I didn't even know who Abraham was. They was teaching me the Bible, but they wasn't teaching me about no blessing. I didn't know Abraham was blessed like that. And I, didn't, I surely didn't know that I was getting what he got. So my expectations were not set like that. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. All right, next, go down to 13 and 14. Same chapter 3, 13 and 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So the curse of the law was you mess up in one area, you, you don't get no credit for nothing. Well, nobody could keep that law. Well, Christ did it for us. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is everyone that hangs on the tree. That's meaning cross right there, interpretation there. Uh, next verse. That, and the reason why, why did he do it? That the blessing, see? Some people think we, he just went to the cross so we can get to heaven. Does it say anything about heaven in this? He did that, why? That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. See that? So he died, he did all that so I can get, not just to heaven, but so I can get the blessing. Amen. So I can get the blessing working in my life. Now Galatians 3.29. Galatians 3.29. And if you be Christ, meaning if you belong to Jesus, how many of y'all belong to Jesus tonight? If you belong to Jesus, then you are Abraham's seed. Now you can start doing stuff like looking in the mirror and say, I am Abraham's seed. Am Abraham seed. Wow, I'm the seed of Abraham. Now the average Christian ain't going to know what you're talking about. But you start talking about, I'm the seed of Abraham. Well, and if you be Christ, belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed and what? Heirs according to what? The promise, which is? The blessing, which I already told you, just one little scripture of all these areas that you're blessed in. So now you inherit that. Why? Because you're in Jesus. And so now, does that blessing change because we're in 2024? So that blessing applies to you as long as you're on planet Earth. So no matter what is going on in our world, you're blessed. Because you've chosen to give your life to Jesus. And so we have to see ourselves as covenant children. We have to see ourselves as covenant children. Called to live victoriously here in the earth. And we must learn to focus more on promises. Make sure you get this before we leave. We must learn to focus on promises. What are the promises? Just all the stuff I want is in the book. So we need to focus on the promises more so than the problems. Y'all in here with me? We must learn to focus on promises more so than we focus on problems. Now, if you, because Proverbs 23, 7, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. But if you see yourself as a victim, you'll be victimized. I'm going to just tell you that right now. If you see yourself as a victim, you're going to be victimized. If you see yourself as broke and never having enough money, you're never going to have it. But if you see yourself as blessed of the Lord, then you're going to start winning. Amen. You're going to start dominating in this life because you're going to identify with the blessing. You're going to see yourself as more than a conqueror. Now, here's how God works. God works through promises. And so you need to know how he works. You need to know what his promises are. God works through promises. The devil works through deception. 
And so now the one you pay the most attention to will have the most impact on your life. And so if you're one that is always on the news, always focusing on that deception. Now it's crazy. We don't even know if these people, are, you know, that anybody, the newscaster could be a robot. <laughs> I'm just saying he could be that could be AI up there. Some news person talking about and then not even a real person. But the stuff you focus on, the devil works through deception. God works through promises. The one you focus on the most is going to have the biggest impact on your life. So what you want to do is take this word, Joshua 1, 8, meditate on this word day and night, day and night. Do everything that it tells you to do, and then you will be successful. And so I don't know about you, but I know about me and I'm expecting good things. I said, I'll say it again. These are we're entering into the best times we've ever experienced. Amen. Amen. We're about to start to see more supernatural manifestation, more of God's power being on display than ever before. And I know this is true because I know the enemy is stepping up his deception. And I always learned that he can never outdo God. Amen. Go ahead and give the Lord a hand clap. We're going to close this for tonight. Amen. Praise God. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for meeting us here, giving us what we need to continue on in victory. I praise you and honor you. We're praying right now. Maybe you're watching this and you don't know Jesus as Lord. We want to give you a chance to step in. You too can step into this blessing. All this stuff we preach about tonight is for you too. But you must say yes to Jesus. Church, let's repeat this prayer so that anyone who hears this message will know how to receive Jesus as Lord. Repeat after me. Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. I commit my life into your hands. This day, I am saved. Do with me as you please and fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap for the Lord, amen. <laughs> Praise God, let's stand to our feet, amen. I got y'all a little later on a Wednesday, but man, I had to give you all of that because you, now this is going to really help you out. Especially when you start hearing more, more of this gibberish coming out from these people. You're going to be all right. You're going to be better than all right. You're going to be ready to succeed. Amen. You'll start expecting greater things. Amen. Some of y'all start meditating, doing stuff like I'm doing. I'm meditating on all kinds of stuff. I'm expecting to start gaining properties real soon here. So just step into that. Amen. Stretch your hands to heaven. Father, we just thank you for blessing us. Blessing us to be here. We thank you for the word that went forth. We know it's planted on good ground and it's going to yield forth an abundant harvest. As we leave this place, we ask that you continue to minister to us in a very personal way and surround us with favor as with a shield. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.